welcome to the 15th lecture of combinatorics. So, we were discussing the absorption identity and its companion in the last class where we stopped. So, the absorption uh, to remind you the absorption identity was uh, r choose k equal to so k into r choose k equal to r into r minus 1 choose k minus 1. Uh, this is valid for all integer k so, yeah, all integers k right there is no restriction. So, any r any complex number uh, it can be any complex number k is an integer that is all. So, a k is an integer because this combinatorial coefficients are defined only for lower index integers. Now, the companion is r minus k. So, you can r minus k into r choose k equal to instead of k we use r minus k this equal to r into r minus 1 choose k. The point here is that we are not changing the lower index, but upper index is reduced by 1. In the earlier one both upper and lower index was reduced and but then instead of k we are using r minus k here right. So, we want r minus k into uh, r choose k right. So, first we oh, we what do we do we apply this r choose uh, r minus k into r choose k is equal to r minus k into. So, this uh, r choose k we replace by r choose r minus k this is by applying symmetry identity. So, it is a why I wrote it in red because anyway symmetry identity cannot be used for all r and all k we have some restriction there remember. But for the time being we just assume that we can do that right. Suppose we can do that then so you know this and this has become same now this and this this lower index and this value. So, it is uh, it is like our previous identity k r choose k is equal to r r minus k choose. So, instead of the uh, here instead of k we have r minus k k r minus r r minus k right. So, therefore, yeah, here this and this are same. So, we can write it as r into using the previous absorption identity. So, both indexes will reduce r minus 1 r minus k minus 1 this is that. Now, we can again apply the symmetry identity this is r into uh, r minus 1 r minus 1 minus r minus k minus 1 that is just k right. So, we put r minus 1 minus r minus k minus 1 we get k. So, r and r cancel minus 1 minus 1 cancel minus 1 minus k is k. So, that is what we are writing here. So, here again symmetry identity is used, but the only issue that this was ok the second step was ok because this was an adsorption identity. Uh, we used absorption identity we used from here to here, but here r minus k was converted to r. Uh, so r choose r, r choose k was converted to r choose r minus k. Similarly, here r minus one choose r minus k minus one was converted to r minus one choose k. Both use the symmetry identity, but the symmetry identity works only for non-negative integer r, not even integer r non negative integer r as we have seen and uh, of case. So, that, that is what the this is ok this is any integer. Then how do we say that uh, this companion to the absorption identity namely this one works for all integers all k all integers k that means there is no restriction on r. So, that is what we claimed initially the proof does not seems to say that right here, but here we learn a new technique. The technique is that uh, see this r choose k while we have written this r k falling factorial divided by k factorial. So, we could even have considered r as a variable here. So, that will look like r into r minus 1 into 
so r minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial. So, as long as k is a positive integer, so this r is a variable and this if we expand we will get a polynomial in k th degree polynomial will come in the numerator divided by k factorial, k being some positive constant here, right. So, for instance, r 3 falling factorial divided by 3 factorial which is r choose 3. This will be r into r minus 1 into r minus 2 divided by 6 which is r square minus r into r minus 2. So, I multiplied it here first and uh, divided by 6 which is again multiplying r cube minus r square and uh, we are minus 2 r square right and then plus uh, 2 r divided by 6 right r cube r cube 2 minus 2 r square minus r square that is total minus we can write minus 3 r square instead minus 3 r square and plus 2 r divided by 6. So, up in the numerator we do have a polynomial of degree 3 and uh, that is that is true for uh, r 2 k also right. So, this this way we can interpret uh, this r 2 k as a polynomial of degree 3 k in r. Now, good. So, that will help us here. So, if it is a polynomial of degree k in r degree k in r, then this identity we wanted to prove, look r, r minus k r choose k is equal to r into, this is a polynomial of degree, this is a polynomial of degree k in r, this is a polynomial of degree k in r. So, this uh, this side we are multiplying uh, into r minus k, this side you are multiplying by r. So, uh, here it is a polynomial of degree k plus 1 here a polynomial of degree k plus 1 right. So, we are just comparing them. So, for instance we could have rearranged it and told uh, so we are trying to prove r minus k into r choose k minus uh, r into r minus 1 choose k equal to 0 this is what we want to prove for all integer k. So, this is a polynomial identity that means this is a polynomial of k plus 1 degree here, this is a polynomial of k plus 1 degree here when you minus the degree is at most k plus 1 that is equal to 0 and we saw that when r for a some fixed k where k is a positive integer right. So, assume that k is a positive integer why because k is a negative integer we do not have much problem why is uh, no problem because uh, if k was a negative integer r choose k uh, this side will be negative anyway. So, we can say we can go back to the identity. So, this side will be uh, r choose a negative number that will become 0 this side will be r minus 1 choose a negative number that will again be 0, but 0 is equal to 0 is what it says. So, it does not matter. So, it is anyway true. Therefore, we can assume that it is k 0 or uh, even if when it is 0 that is not a problem because if it was 0 r choose uh, 0 is uh, 1 and this r minus 1 choose 0 is also 1 and uh, k equal to 0 that is saying that r equal to r that is correct. So, therefore, we can assume that k is a positive integer if you want. We could have we only need the assumption that k is a non negative integer, but now so why non negative integer because for non negative integer k this definition works and then now we can interpret it as a polynomial in r otherwise uh, so okay if uh, yeah if it was a negative integer that was not correct r k falling factorial uh, by 0 factorial we would not be interpreting it that way right. So, yeah it is just 0, but 
yeah so that uh, interpretation won't be uh, won't make much sense so here therefore we will assume that this is a polynomial of degree at most k plus 1 right sorry uh, k plus 1 at most k plus 1 so now uh, the the polynomial in r uh, so you know that all when r is a uh, positive integer r is a positive integer or oh, this anyway works or oh, r is a non negative number right this anyway works because symmetry identity it is valid our previous derivation was valid uh, when this derivation was valid when r is a non negative integer right because the only thing the only wrong thing we did wrong thing we did was the symmetry using the symmetry identity symmetry because symmetry identity was only valid for non negative r so um, so now so okay of case we know that there are several values of r an infinite number of values of r for which this is true for which this is true means when i substitute r equal to those values any positive integer this will work out this this will evaluate to zero that means all those positive integers are roots of this polynomial so remember the variable of this polynomial is r here so we can instead of r you could have, you can write x and c right that will look better maybe it's more familiar so here this will also become x so put x equal to any positive integer it will evaluate to zero that means how many roots this have of this pol uh, this polynomial has infinite number of roots but then you know that a k plus 1 degree polynomial a polynomial of degree at most k plus 1 can have only maximum k plus 1 distinct roots right of case i don't prove it this is a well known fact uh so if that is the case uh what do we infer that the polynomial if it is not identically zero for instance a polynomial of this sort 0 into x raised to k plus 1 plus 0 into x raised to k plus 0 into yeah uh, x raised to k minus 1 and so on uh, this polynomial whichever value you substitute for x will evaluate to 0 right so this is zero polynomial right so this is the only way you can get infinite number of solutions number of roots for a polynomial right otherwise if it is not identically zero like this then definitely it has only a maximum of k plus 1 roots and here we have seen more than k plus 1 roots so that means we can infer that it is identically zero that means this uh, this equa this equality we have written equation we have written here is always true for any value of x it is correct that is what it means right for any value of it it is correct so in particular you can put any complex value for x it will work right fixing a k you can give any complex value so this kind of uh, this argument of case we uh, proved it for only positive integers positive integer r we only have to prove it for positive integer r so symmetry identity we can use and then we inferred by this argument this roundabout argument that of case therefore it will work for any r so, though it was not obvious the main idea we used was that it is a polynomial and uh, for infinitely many values of r it is evaluating to 0 but if it was not I, that polynomial was not identically 0 everywhere not 0 for every substitution of r any possible value of r if the polynomial was not evaluating to 0 then only for k plus 1 values maximum k plus 1 values it could have evaluated to 0 because it is a k polynomial of degree at most k plus 1 now that is not true so therefore it should be identically 0 so for any value of r it should work so this is called polynomial argument you see in uh, this is a very very useful argument to generalize the combinatorial identities so you can see that always it won't work because uh, see if you take uh, n choose n so this identity the symmetry identity r choose k equal to r choose 
r minus we told that this won't work for any r see the first of all the identity to itself was not making sense but even then you can see that this is not a polynomial uh, equation we have we are having here because this is a polynomial uh, right but here what is this r minus k right so that doesn't make sense so uh, so that is that is the problem because you do not have um, a polynomial here right so that is why this here we cannot use that method uh, to, to, to prove the symmetry identity but there are several cases we can use it right we will see another case here so this is the next case this is the yeah the most important formula we proved for uh, the binomial coefficients namely the addition formula r choose k is equal to r minus 1 choose k plus yeah r choose k equal to r minus 1 choose k plus r minus 1 choose k minus 1 and uh, we claim that so this can be completely generalized this works for all integers k so we can see whether uh, for negative k it works or not yeah for negative k what happens is this r choose k this will become zero this will become zero and this will also become zero because anyway k is negative this will also become zero everything will be zero so it's trivially true for negative k for 0 k also we can check probably so r choose 0 from n k equal to 0 also we can check r choose 0 this is going to be 1 right and this is also going to be 1 plus this is going to be negative 0 minus 1 minus 1 so this is this is also correct right when k equal to 0 so now we can probably assume that we can from here on we can assume that k is greater than equal to sorry greater than 0 mean even equal to is not necessary for us because we just found that now the issue is r r we have generalized to any complex number so how will you deal with that r choose k equal to r minus r choose k minus 1 plus r choose uh, sorry r minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus r minus 1 choose k this is what we want to prove but here we can see that the polynomial method will work because this is a polynomial kth degree polynomial in r this is a k minus 1 degree polynomial in r and this is also a kth degree polynomial overall we can when we write r choose k minus r minus 1 choose k minus 1 minus r minus 1 choose k equal to 0 this is a polynomial this one is a polynomial of degree at most k and that is equal to 0 is what we have written if we can show that there are infinitely many roots for this already then it is identically 0 any value of r will evaluate to when substituted will evaluate to evaluate this polynomial this polynomial will get evaluated to 0 right so we just have to show that there exists infinitely value infinitely many values of r for which this is true in fact more than k values of r which will uh, evaluate to 0 uh, this for which this polynomial will evaluate to 0. So, we can uh, uh, we already know that why because for every positive integer r uh, this is correct then we have verified it for for instance whenever uh, yeah uh, 0 less than equal to k less than equal to r right we have verified it right it was making sense right otherwise also because when k was right greater than r also this is correct because otherwise it is 0 um, you know so if r is greater than equal to 0 then this will be 0 or minus this will be 0 this will be 0 also right 0 plus 0 so for all those values it is 0 there are lots several values of at least we can take any any positive integer r which is greater than or equal to k and it is going to be true right as we have seen before so by the counting argument right? oh we have seen several proofs of this thing before so therefore uh, combining it with the polynomial argument we conclude that the generalization is correct that means we can 
generalize this R to complex numbers and still this is valid. Uh, this is about the generalization of addition formula. Now the next uh, one, now maybe it is time to talk about uh, the binomial theorem. This is the general form of binomial theorem x plus y raised to r equal to sum over all integers k r choose k into x raised to k into y raised to r minus k. This is the same as earlier just that uh, when r was an integer uh, see for r is an integer this is true, generally true, but uh, when r is not sorry uh, when r is a positive integer or maybe r is greater than equal to 0 non negative integer this was uh, true for any x and y, uh, but when uh, r is not a non negative integer then we need a restriction that namely x plus y x by y ratio of x by y uh, the modulus is less than 0. This is for the uh, sake of convergence. We will we'll see why this is because you know first recall that x plus y raised to r if it was um, say this is the way it is written k for all k uh, r choose k so x raised to k into y raised to r minus k. So, if k was a k was n k was a positive integer n. So, then this will become n choose k right x raised to n y raised to n minus k. The only thing is we are now writing the sum for all integers k of k this negative integers does not make much of a problem because anyway r choose k r choose a negative number is going to be 0 that will go away. So, that is that would not contribute to the sum at all. So, and then when uh, starting from 0 onwards it will contribute up to r because k equal to k greater than equal to r plus 1 uh, this co coefficients will again disappear. So, only when k is in between 0 and r this will disappear uh, this will contribute uh, when r is a non negative integer. So, therefore, this will uh, this will be the earlier formula only whatever we have learned before right. So, that x plus y raised to n equal to n choose 0 plus n choose uh, n choose 0 x raised to 0 y raised to n plus n choose 1 x raised to 1 into y raised to n minus 1 plus n choose 2 into x raised to 2 into y raised to n minus 2 and so on. That formula will come from this thing, but if r is not of case this is valid we are claiming that this is valid for any r even complex numbers it is for negative integers complex numbers numbers like r equal to half some fractions all for any number it is valid as what we are claiming right. Just that uh, in that case this will be an infinite sum this we cannot say that only for k in between 0 and r this uh, the terms will this terms will remain uh, as such non zero because you know if r is not an integer it is not r choose k is not going to be 0. You remember that the formula for r choose k is r k falling factorial divided by 0 falling factorial of okay, k still we can say that when k is negative it will anyway disappear. So, for positive k only we have to worry about right. So, for positive or 0 k right. So, yeah this is you know when r is not an integer this falling factorial r into r minus 1 into though it may start with a positive number and go down to a negative number, but it will not go through 0 because we did not start with an integer and we are minusing 1 1 1 right minus 1 minus 2 like that. So, this will not be 0. So, therefore, they will uh, they will remain all of them will remain uh, the terms will remain. So, therefore, uh, we have to sum we, the sum is an infinite sum over all positive all non negative integer k right. And uh, the next thing is if you write an infinite sum like that we have to worry about the convergence of will it converge or not. So, 
for convergence we need the condition that x by y uh, this ratios absolute value is less than 1 this is what is written in the second uh, part right this what is written in the second part x by y ratio is less than 1 whichever, whichever is the bigger one you can see the question about how do we prove it again we are not in combinatorics anymore when we talk about this thing. So, of course, we can say that we are not in really counting now, but uh, we are talking about combinatorial coefficients are choose k. So, but the proof is also it is not very uh, difficult only thing is we have to use the Taylor series, we have to use the Taylor series, uh, but instead of using this. So, I am not going to uh, give a very thorough proof of that. I will just indicate what it is uh, rather than worrying about one can learn this easily from the calculus books rather than a combinatorics course, but it is important that we get familiar with this form right. So, instead of usually it is uh, it is written 1 plus z raise to r as I had written earlier. So, because it can be yeah, for some the thing is as far as yeah, we will write uh, 1 plus z raised to r is equal to sum over k uh, r choose k z raised to k is what we write right and we need modulus of z less than 1 for convergence thing, right. So, um, note that if you know this thing the other formula will come very easily by substituting z equal to x by y put x by y here right. So, what will happen this also will be x by y x by y raise to k. So, now you can multiply both sides by y raise to r yeah, here also you can multiply by y raise to r see what will happen this will uh, because so, when y goes inside here because it is y raised to r into a power. So, what happened what will so this this will this will be written as x by y less than 1 because right this will become y plus x to the power r is equal to yeah sigma k into. So, here because y raised to r is multiplying it instead of this it will become x raised to k into yeah y raised to y raised to r minus k right this is the way it will happen. So, we can uh, we only have to worry about 1 plus z raise to. So, this is 1 plus z raise to r what is the expansion of 1 plus z raise to r is what we are asking we want to show that this is sigma k uh, sigma k r choose k z raise to k for um, all integers k. So, we will take a function f of z and the, let this fun, let this be the function right and we will use uh, the Taylor series to expand this thing and uh, yeah that will be read like this f of z the Taylor series f of z equal to f of 0 by 0 factorial into z raised to 0 plus f dash of 0 by 1 factorial into z raised to 1 plus um, f double dash of 0 by 2 factorial into z square and so on. We can keep on writing like this right. Anyway, non negative integers are unimportant we just uh, start from 0 and onwards because non negative integer anyway con does not contribute right. So, the kth term will be f kth derivative of the we will evaluate it at 0 and this is k factorial below into z raise to k will come right and so on. This is the Taylor series expansion and then uh, we just uh, evaluate. So, to get the answer we only evaluate uh, what is yeah uh, the value of this thing for f of 0 it is very easy to see put at z equal to you know what is this function 1 plus z raise to r is what we are saying. So, this here we do not have uh, any problem which is put uh, uh, 0 for z. 
so that is uh, 1. So, we can just write it as r choose 0 because that is 1. So, that is uh, this is ok, this is this will turn out to be r choose 0 and here uh, first derivative we can find from this thing and that is not a big problem because r into that is just r right r, right? that is r uh, 1 falling factorial right when, when you take the first derivative here. Uh, you should refer back to your cal calculus books how you take derivative divided by 1 factorial. This is what our by our definition r choose 1 right that will come here this will and here it is a second derivative if you take 2 times the derivative of 1 plus z raised to r that is r into uh, yeah uh, 1 plus z raised to r minus 1 first and again r into r minus 1 right. Uh, then uh, that divided by 2 factor is our r choose 2. So, like that. So, in the kth term we will get uh, exactly uh, r k falling factorial divided by k factorial which is r choose k right. So, that is where this is coming from. So, and only the only thing we have to now worry about is uh, the convergence of this thing. The convergence of this thing is ensured if z is less than 1 right. So, that also I um, I just leave out because it just why uh, when z is less than 1. So, you have to estimate you have to have an estimate of how big these things are there. So, then we will see that that will be um, anyway converge right. So, I leave it to you to figure out anyway that is it is this also knowing the proof is not very important here no, knowing the formula is more important. But you can always if you are very curious and want to be clear about it you can go back to a calculus book and verify it right. So, it will be the Newton's binomial formula. So, binomial theorem. So, that will uh, that will be available in usual, uh, usual books right. So, then usual calculus books. So, the Taylor series all this uh, the, the details of all these things you can get from the such one of the uh, usual books dealing with this subject calculus ok. Now, uh, the only thing now before leaving, so I uh, just want to uh, before uh, finishing this discussion, I want to talk some special talk about some special cases namely the negative integers that of case uh, because we are doing combinatorics like mostly we will not uh, get into complex numbers or any complex numbers and all we may get into, but still this negative integer seems to be quite uh, interesting. So, so and we remember we had a Pascal's triangle we wrote something like 0. So, this was a 0 0 0, but then uh, hmm, we wrote yeah, so the, sorry. So, so I am just writing it as 0 throw row number here, row number 0 throw was 0 sorry 0 throw n choose 0 choose 0 uh, that is 1 and then uh, then we wrote 1 1 because first row is 1 choose 0 and 1 choose 1 and then second row is uh, 1 2 1 because this is 2 choose 1, 2 choose 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1 and 2 choose 2 and so on we kept. So, can we write about minus 1 throws minus minus 2 like this backward right. So, we we can complete it this way. So, the this row is uh, 1. So, we, we, we just we can just uh, uh, consider this uh, row 1 this is minus 1 and uh, this alternate 1 and minus 1 right ok 1 minus 1 uh, 1 minus 1 like that right. So, how will we do this thing because yeah how will I get it. So, one formula which uh, helps is the addition formula n choose r is equal to Yeah, and choose r is equal to n minus 1 choose 
r minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose r right so for instance if i want to find minus 1 choose some k right the kth column so what will i write minus 1 minus 1 So maybe you can use it here right minus 1 uh, correct so we can use the addition formula in the following way so n minus 1 choose k so minus 1 minus 2 that is yeah that is minus 2 choose k plus minus 2 choose k minus 1 right suppose this is this is the one we want to write and we already know this thing then we can write yeah this minus 2 choose k as minus 1 choose k minus minus 2 choose k minus 1 right that is we can we that is what we can do or maybe we write it as 0 choose yeah so for instance if you if write uh, this if the row for minus 1 so let us see so we can we can get this thing get this thing using this and this right so that means in the pascal's triangle we just go uh, the, when you want to write the minus 2 column we just go one row before one column before just behind and then uh, add the thing below it that's that's what it's saying so maybe so for instance if i want to this is some minus entry right for minus uh, n so here we want to the kth column entry we want to enter so we go before so that is minus n uh, and k minus 1 it's a previous column so we can pick up this entry and uh, so that should be so this we should minus this thing right from the just above one right minus n plus 1 right minus 1 uh, choose k this minus choose this will give so maybe we should check out some of the some of the entries we should check out some of the entries the all the initial entries are Yeah, so this is we, we will write like this. Okay, fine. We have zero to zero. We will we will write like this. Zero to zero is equal to minus one to zero plus minus one choose minus one. Is this correct? Because this this put n equal to zero here, and this is n minus one this is n minus 1 right and uh, this was our k so this is our k minus 1 this sorry this is our k and this is our k minus 1 right so and then these both these quantities are 1 we know because when whenever uh, the lower index is 0 we by definition it is 1 right because r to the 0 following is 1 and we have 0 factorial this is 1 so this is 1 plus 1 
plus this minus 1 minus 1. So, this has to be 0 and this also we have defined 0, but uh, that is 0 right and uh, yeah this is the way we are doing and we are minusing this from this right and then now we can um, right. So, now we can say that 0 1 what is this 0 1 is equal to this is our n this is our k right and now this is 0 same k n n sorry minus 1 that is n minus 1 and here is same k and then minus 1 0 here it is uh, 0 choose 1 is 0 right this is 0 and uh, here minus 1 choose 1 this if you want to evaluate and uh, this is again 1 so this is again this is again one this this quantity is again one so therefore 0 minus 1 so this this quantity will be 0 minus 1 so that is minus 1 like that so we can see that so we can using this addition formula we can fill back the uh, fill the entire pascal triangle backward backward means in the negative direction also we can fill right so what what did we do we just uh, uh, starting from 0 0 so and knowing that uh, for all minus uh, k choose 0 that is all 1 right and then um, yeah we could fill that negative uh, 1 row we can fill right like uh, yeah, we can fill 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 that rows minus 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 right at because the and then we can also fill it backward and similarly we can go through putting the minus 2 things right. So, rather than computing everything because it is a tedious job. So, what we do is so we write down the things and then check that is easier. So, 0 this is 1 0 0 0 0 like this and then here we have 1 minus 1 uh, this is so, I correspond to the n choose 0, n choose 1, these are the columns, n choose 1, this n choose 2, n choose 3 and so on, 3 and so on. This is 1 minus 1, uh, 1 minus 1, n choose 1 is minus 1 and then uh, 1. So, this for minus 1, right, plus 1 and minus 1 and so on. And here, this is minus 2 for minus 2 we will get um, right. So, here it is 1 only right and then here it is minus 1 minus 1 mi minus 2 here it is uh, three. 1 minus minus 2 3 this is the way see actually Yeah, this will correspond to our n choose k we are evaluating right. So, the, so th this will correspond to our n minus 1 choose k we are evaluating right. So, this will correspond to our n choose k k and we are this will be n minus 1 choose k minus 1. So, we know this already because the the row below it is already computed. So, this we know and this we know because our, this is being constructed like this. So, this minus this is this right. So, n choose k minus n minus 1 choose k minus 1 is equal to n minus 1 choose k. I think I wrote it wrongly somewhere here. So, yeah.
I don't know where I wrote. Yeah, so we are actually computing uh, this. Yeah, this one, right? Knowing this one and this one. This comes from the row. Maybe the way we I drew it. Maybe yeah, here maybe this is this was correct. This was this is what. And the uh, the just row below it, right? The kth quantity, and then we are uh, minusing it. The thing below it. This and this is minus, and we got this, right? This way we got it. Yeah. Now we can compute it, uh, complete it. So so here minus one minus four. This will be minus uh, four, right? And this will be one minus minus four will be five. And then this will be minus one minus y will be minus six and so on, right? And then similarly, you can. This is always one, so we we can do this thing. Minus two minus one. This will be minus three, and this will be three minus three. That's three minus minus three. That's six, right? And so on. We can fill it like this. Uh, okay. So uh, this is the way we can fill the Pascal triangle. Uh, say backward. Backward means upward, right? Say. Negative numbers for the negative numbers, right? So we just need to use the addition formula properly. If I have confused the thing, just uh, think about it carefully. There's nothing complicated going on. Just that uh, we need to recursively fill it, right? We assume that we know the zero row, and we also know the n to zero column because that's all ones, right? And from that we can fill it. That's all. Now. Uh, Now, why do we fill it? I just get a feel of what it is, and then af after all, we can write down the when we want to write down the binomial formula. We can also uh, for uh, negative n negative integers, we can always pick up the coefficients from this table. Now, the some interesting thing we can note here, namely that the numbers we are seeing here are not at all unfamiliar. These are the same numbers which we uh, see in the other part. For instance, you can. I have been seeing uh, this formula. Yeah. So I don't know whether. So yeah. So I didn't write it anywhere here. It seems or or it disappeared. So. Here, if the earlier, the later columns will be ones or one, so at some point of time it will be one, then one one, then it will be one two one, and then one three three one, and one four six four one, and one uh, five ten ten five one. All these numbers which are appearing are actually appearing here also. If you look at the Patterns, we can see that. Of see, I haven't written a lot of columns. Maybe from what I have written, it may not be so easy to see the pattern. But if you yourself write down lots of them, several columns, and compare that, and see that these numbers are same, and see which number the in the negative side, which a number correspond to uh, a number in the positive side, and try to uh, map the things and find out a formula, you will see that. Uh, so this is the formula we can we can get. R choose k is equal to minus one raised to k, k minus r minus one choose k. As you have seen, R choose k is equal to this formula. You can guess minus if you if you stare at the Pascal triangle for something, some time, right? K minus R minus one. So does it make sense? For instance, uh, say let's say five choose four will be equal to minus one raised to four. That means there is no post negative sign into uh, four minus five minus one. This is how much. This is <coughs> minus two, right? This is minus two, minus two four. Or if you want to try 
uh, with a num minus number say minus 3 choose 5 if you want to find. So, that will be uh, 5 minus of minus 3 plus 3 minus 1 which is actually 8 minus 1 7 choose 5, but of case we have a uh, we have a minus 1 raised to 5 here that means this will be this will be a negative ok this will be negative 7 minus 5 7 choose 5. So, like that there is a relation between this thing. So, column wise uh, so, if you look at any r choose k, we will see the same number somewhere else in the same column namely in this position k minus r minus 1 the same same column k correspond to the column right lower index correspond to the column and uh, some number if it is a negative or positive number a corresponding if this is a negative number means this will be a positive number right. And if this is a positive number, this is going to be uh, a negative. Okay, of case, if uh, k was bigger than r, then it is already 0 and then yeah, uh, that is a different uh, issue. So, otherwise, uh, for instance, you can see that uh, here it is, uh, suppose r is positive and then uh, k minus r is it's a, the k is smaller than r then k minus r is going to be uh, a k, k minus r is going to be negative minus 1 is going to be negative number and the reverse is happening right and uh, so the this is minus 1 raised to k here so you can see that negative and positive signs are there that you have to discard so, of okay, so let us look at the proof of this thing. This proof is also not very difficult. So, for instance, r choose k is equal to we can just uh, say this is r into r minus 1 into r minus k plus 1 divided by k factor. Now, uh, just multiply by minus 1 raised to k right. So, r choose k uh, so for in not multiply. So, what we do is we just extract uh, minus from 1 from each of them. So, for instance if I extract minus from 1 from r that will be a minus 1 this will become minus r. So, when I extract minus 1 from 1 r minus 1 it will become 1 minus r and this will become square 1 more minus 1 comes out then the next one becomes 1 minus sorry 2 minus r and here it will becomes 3. So, finally, this will become minus 1 raised to k because there are k terms here and then the last one will become uh, right k minus 1 minus r right ok yeah k minus r minus 1. Now, you see that uh, this minus uh, divided by k factorial of case. So, we can read it downwards right. So, this is r sorry this is minus 1 raised to k into uh, k minus r minus 1. So, next is k minus r minus 1 minus 1 right and so on. So, it is coming down right. So, therefore, this is k minus r minus 1 uh, k falling factorial divided by k factorial. This is equal to uh, minus 1 raised to k um, k minus r minus 1 choose k. This is by definition right. So, the way to remember the formula is this. So, when you say r choose k, first you write of case minus 1 raised to k and remember that lower index is same because we are in the same column and then we write k, this k here just like that and then we minus r negate negate r and then one more minus. This is what it is going to, this works for all integers k. So, of case the other cases 
where for instance here uh, what we have done is of case we have uh, first of all uh, we have assumed that r choose k can be written like this which uh, assumes that k is greater than or equal to 0 otherwise we cannot do that ok is at least yeah so this formula is correct right k is greater than equal to 0 otherwise uh, it is not very difficult to check this thing for instance k is equal to negative index both are zeros therefore it is anyway correct so therefore we can assume that and then k is equal to 0 also this is r choose 0 and then uh, uh, yeah this is this is 1 and what is this this is put uh, 0 here 0 minus 1 choose or minus 1 choose this is also uh, yeah this is also 1 right and this one because k equal to 0 will be 1 so 1 is equal to 1 that is correct so we can assume that k greater than k is a positive integer right we can assume that k is a positive integer and so therefore this this is correct this formula is you can you can expand it that way and then we can always extract uh, minus 1 out of this thing that is not wrong right so and of case there is one thing so if we can also consider the case where uh, the k is greater than r k is greater than r if k is greater than r this is going to be 0 if k is greater than r it is going to be 0 and here uh, what is happening k is greater than r so we have uh, r choose something bigger than r and then okay it's time now so i'll we will discuss in the next class